This is a pivotal moment for anyone that uses WordPress because a new version of WordPress is coming out, version 6.2, and it completely draws the line in the sand with all the page building tools on the market. And that's because WordPress now offers a complete theme building experience along with the page builder, and you don't even have to pay for it. It's all just built in. And what's especially nice is if you've used WordPress at any point in the last four years, it's so easy to use this new theme building experience because you already know how to use it. But there's one catch that I'm going to cover in this video along with everything else that's new in this version to create faster websites that are better. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. This is the screen you'll be welcome to when you update to WordPress 6.2 next week. And it's going to list out a lot of the new things that are there. Of course, I'm going to show you all of that in this video, but I'm going to start with the new theme building experience. And first I have to cover like the first gotcha for it. Typically, when you want to add a new theme to your website, you can look here at the theme directory or when you're on your website, you could go to appearance themes and then you can click this button here that says add new. But not all of these themes that you see here will be able to take advantage of this new theme building experience. You specifically have to use what's called a block theme. And as you see, there is a special option here that says block themes. And if you're here on the WordPress website, that same option is right there to list out these specific block themes. And as you can see, there's not quite as many of these as the normal themes. So you see here, there's only 256. And you can see here the normal themes, there's over 10,000 of them. When you're using a block based theme, you'll see this here where it says editor. Now, if you're using one of the traditional themes or what are now being called classic themes, you won't have this editor option. It will say customizer. Now for this video, I'm going to use the Spectra one theme, which has not been released just yet. The Spectra one theme is a block based theme made by the developers of Spectra. Now this theme is free and it's already been submitted to be included into the theme directory here. It's not quite approved just yet, but it will be very soon. But I'm just using this theme not to specifically show it off. I'm just using it because it's the block based theme that I'm choosing to use in this video. And if you want to use the new WordPress theme editor, you're going to need to have a block based theme as well. Now, I know it could be a little confusing. What kind of theme do I have? Is it a block based theme? Is it a classic theme? What's the differences? What's the pros and cons? Subscribe to the channel here because I'm going to have a video out on that in the next day or so, and you'll be able to watch that and have a full understanding of the difference between the two. To access this new theme building experience, all we have to do is click here where it says editor and it's going to take us right on into it. Now this theme building experience is going to give you everything that you would expect. You can set all of the global styles, the different styles for your website. You can put in visually a different header or a footer for your site. Also a different header and footer of different parts of your site. You can create page templates, blog post templates, archive templates. You can do it all right here, all visually using the block editor, which you probably already know how to use. So if I wanted to create a new template, say for a blog post, I can click right here where it says templates. And here's the ones that come with the theme. I can click into any of these and start customizing it to my liking. If I want to add a new one, I can click this plus right here. So what happens is when you first go into the editor, you have this experience and what's nice is you can resize this just like that to see what your website will look like in different screen widths. And then you could just click into it with one click and now you're into the editing experience of your theme. So the first thing you would want to do is click this little icon here on the top right and choose the styles that your theme makes available to you. And you can also customize them. So I can click right here where it says browse styles and this theme right now provides these two styles. So here's the light mode and then here's the dark mode and you see one click and it completely changes. They already have about seven more styles that are about to come out when this is finally made available in just a week or so. But for now, they have these different styles right here. 
let's go back. Now, the next thing you might want to do when you're using a theme builder is to customize the individual styles for the components that make up your website. That would be maybe to change the styles of your headings and your paragraph text and your buttons and all of that. Well, there's something brand new called the style book. And to access that, you simply click on this little eye icon right here, and then it reveals this different interface here with these different tabs. So the first tab is text, and I can see what the text will look like on my website and tweak it. So here's my different headings. Here's what paragraph text will look like, list, and it goes on and on. And we also have a tab here for media, what that's going to look like, images and your galleries, different things. Uh, we have design right here, and this is gonna be like your buttons, as you can see. Widgets, and then there's also some theme elements for your headers and footers. Now, what's nice is you can click in here and customize this visually, and it takes effect across your website. So if I don't like how my headings are looking, I can click on text, I can click here on the headings, and then over here on the right, I can customize the topography and the colors for my headings. Just simply click on into it, and here it is. And then when you're done with the style book, simply click on the eye again, it disappears and your website comes right back. So now let's take a look at the parts that make up your website. And we always go from top to bottom, so let's take a look at the header. So I can click right here into the header and you can see there's this purple border and you can see right here it says header. Now, this is something that I really like. If I, if I don't like this header layout, all I have to do is click the three dots. And there's this option here that says replace header. And then I get this nice pop-up that appears with different header patterns that I can choose. So if I want, say, my navigation in the setter, I really like this layout right here. I can click on it and look, now I have a brand new header layout. And it's also the same down below for the footer. If I scroll down here and I click on the footer, you can see it's also highlighted in purple. I can click the three dots, I can choose replace footer, and I can choose an alternative layout that I might like. So maybe let's go with this one right here. And now I have a different look for my footer. Now another nice improvement to make this easier is there's been lots of enhancements to the navigation block right here. So you can just click into different parts that you want to work with, or you can also reveal the list view and you can see all the different parts that make up that header and these are the parts that make up this homepage. So I want to say add a menu item. It's actually quite easy. All I have to do is click right here where it says navigation and you can see right here there's a plus. So let's go ahead and click on the plus and it's added a new menu item. Let's click on it and I can link it to any of the pages on my website. It's pulling up some here or I can search for a page. So I'll go ahead and choose my services page right here. And when I click on it, the text changes to services. Now what's really cool, there's multiple ways of ordering this. So I can click this arrow right here to reorder it, or I can click into the navigation block itself, and this is brand new over here as well on the right. This is a drag and drop ordering system and customization system for your navigation. So if I wanted my services to be higher, I probably do, I want it right next to the home, I just had to drag and drop it like that. I can click in it, I can customize the text, but I could have customized it directly here visually. And here's the link, I can add whatever additional details that I want. It's all drag and drop done visually. But wait, there's more that you can do here. When you click on that plus, there's different elements that you can add to the navigation. So you can add a page lift. It's pretty much going to create a drop down menu for you. You can add the site logo and this makes it super easy to have that layout where the site logo might be in the center of the navigation and you'll have some of your navigation on the left and some on the right. You can add social icons as well as a search. So I'll go ahead and click right here on the search and now I have this search option here which is actually not what I wanted so let's go ahead and remove that. You can see it's so much easier now to work with this navigation system that has been completely 
revamped. It's way more useful and easy to use. Now I already showed when you click here, you can customize the styles. So topography, colors, even the layout width, you can easily click into these and do it. But there's also something really cool. And this is this new push the default styles. Let me show you what that is. So I have this heading right here and hey, it's quite nice. Let's go back into the block settings right here and I can start customizing it any way that I want. And then when I scroll all the way down and click here into the advanced panel, there's a new option right here that says apply globally. So for some of the different blocks that make up your website, this is gonna be an option. You also have it here with buttons. You can also customize those here visually and then push it to be a global style. Now what's also new is there's a new location to put custom CSS. It's a little buried. So if you click right here to show the styles panel, then there's these three dots right here. Like I said, it's a little buried. You click on that. There's this option here that says additional CSS. And here's where you can add CSS that will be applied across your site. There's also something very nice that's new and that is the ability to add custom CSS to individual and specific blocks. So here's my headings. So when I click on it, there's this option here that says additional block CSS, and this would apply only to this particular block. So the same would be for my button. If I wanna click right here for my button, you can see I can add some specific CSS that's only going to apply to that button. And lastly, one of my favorite aspects of using a block-based theme is this new concept that has been introduced called fluid topography. And what this is, is the text on your website will automatically resize. There's no more having to set something specific for mobile and for tablet. It's automatically going to resize dynamically as the window gets more narrow. And see, I can demonstrate it right here. And you'll see now the text and everything is going to start to shrink perfectly depending on how wide the viewport is just like that and so this is called fluid topography it's very nice and it makes it so you're creating responsive sites with less effort and that's the theme builder features that come out of the box now depending on the block based theme that you use they can also add some features so let me quickly show you a couple of those features so I think an essential feature is with your header to make it be sticky or to be transparent. And so the theme adds those in this case. So I can click right here where it says header and we have these options here. Now it's already set to transparent mode, but when I toggle this off, you can see it gives you an easy toggle to make the header sticky or to make the header transparent. And you can toggle that on. And now this header is a transparent header. Let me show you that. I'll click on view and I'll click on view site and you can see we have a beautiful transparent header. Now, another general problem with block themes is with the loading of fonts. We're used to with traditional themes being able to see a long list of fonts that we want to choose from for our site, but it doesn't quite work that way with block-based themes because of some performance issues. And I'll get into details about that in the video I'm making comparing the themes, the different types of themes. And so when you click in here to topography and say you want to customize the text font, well, you can see right now it's only showing this one font and that's because a block-based theme has to specifically declare support for the fonts that are going to be available. And it's not a good idea to make them all available because there'll be performance issues. So before the Spectra one theme is made available, they're building a font loader so anyone can choose the fonts that would be shown here. So that's another enhancement that they're adding. Now I'm outside of the site editor and I'm in a the normal page editor. Another feature they've added here that I think is commonly needed is an easy way to show or hide the page title. I know for me on pages, I don't like to show the page title. And the way they've done it is when you click into it, they've added this I here, this I icon and you click on it and then it grays out the title like that. And that is to make it so on the front end, the 
page heading will not show on this particular page. And if you want it back, you can click in there and you can turn it back on. And lastly, very common is some pages you might not want to show a header or not show the header or the footer. They made that very easy. You can click this icon here on the top right and then there's a simple toggle. So if this page I didn't want to show the header or the footer or maybe just not show the footer and show the header, you've got these options right here. It's just a toggle. So those are some of the common things that you might miss switching to a block theme. You just want to make sure you choose a block theme that's going to have those features that you're used to. I've tested a bunch of them. They don't all have those features. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of show you because now you know that those aren't in most typical block based themes and they're not coming in the site editor. So there's definitely a place for choosing the right block theme. But now that we're in the editor, let me show you some of the changes that you're going to experience in there. Let's start with native copy and paste styles. Now, if you're using a block package, they have all built this in so that you've had access to it, but now it's in the core of WordPress. So I've got two buttons here. I can click right here on this button and they kind of hide the option. So I have to go to this little drop down here and do copy styles. I'm pretty sure at some point they'll move it and then I'll click right here and I'll do the same drop down and I'll click on paste styles just like that. I'm sure they'll make this easier in the future. And if you notice, there's an also this is uh, I'm using the Spectra plugin on here and this is where they put there. So they pull it out, which I think is better to put it out here on the toolbar like that. But now this is a native component inside of WordPress. The second change, I don't know if you noticed over here on the top right, this icon's different before. I believe it was like a click wheel and now it's just a different icon to let you know by just glancing at it that when you click on it, it's going to pull out this setting panel. So that's a nice little bit of refinement. There was another change. I don't know if you picked it up when you are in one of the core blocks. Now the settings for that block are broken up into this new tab system. So the first option here is the settings for it. And then the second option here is for the styles for that. So you're going to see this new tab system in all the core blocks. The third change is there used to be an icon up here that would give you some information about what's your on your page. It would break down the headings and all this kind of stuff. It would count the words. It would do all kinds of things like that. And it's still there. The way you would access that is you would click on the list view and now it's named the document overview. And here's the see the list view, but there it is outline. And you can see right here, 22 characters and four words. That's all I've added to this page. Now the next improvement I like a lot and it's an easier way to add media to your layouts. So when you click on the plus now you're going to see this new option right here that says media and when you click on it it's going to show you all of the images that are in your media library. So you simply click here and this panel shows up right here and you can click on anything and boom, it gets added right to the canvas. But they've also brought in OpenVerse and OpenVerse is this online catalog of images that people can add images to. It's all open sourced and all that kind of creative common stuff. So I could be saying some of these things wrong, but the point is you can go here and you can search for anything and there might be a picture there that it has what you need. So if I like this picture right here, I can click on it. It downloads it to my media library. And as you can see, it's added it right here. Now it's also added the proper credits for it. I don't know what's proper or improper for this. You could turn that off right here. I don't know if people want those credits uh, or if it's a requirement, but the option is there to take them off if that's not what you wanted. Just make sure you're following all the guidelines of that image repository. And lastly, also inside there was this new patterns tab. I think the patterns tab was there, but I think the experience is a little bit different. So if the theme that you're using provides patterns, you can click on these and guess what? You're going to see all the different patterns that are available in the way that they've organized them, just like as you can see here. So if I wanted to say add this banner right here to my layout, I can simply click on it and you can see it has been added right there to my layout. And you can pretty much start assembling websites with adding the different patterns that you would for a full page layout. 
Now, there's only one more odds and ends that I didn't cover, and that's because I don't see myself using it, and it's down here. It starts talking about that. Here it is. Focus on writing with distraction-free mode. It just puts your experience into this distraction-free mode, and it's made just for writing. I guess it might be good for people that write a blog post inside their site. I do it in Google Docs, so I don't do that inside of my WordPress site, but you might find some value out of this if you do lots of writing. Now in the comment section down below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this new WordPress theme builder that you get when you use a block based theme? And on your next project, are you going to try out or switch to a block based theme from a classic theme? I, for one, I'm switching wherever it makes sense. And in most of the cases, it totally makes sense for me to make this switch, especially because for e-commerce, I don't use WooCommerce anymore. Now I use Shortcart, uh, which is already fully block based. I already know how to use the site editor because I've been using the block editor all this time. For me, it makes sense in most cases. Now, if you want to know all the differences before making that choice, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will have a video comparing the two and, and, and fully covering the pros and the cons. So you know exactly what you're getting yourself into, but it's as clear as day that the future of WordPress is these block based themes. And I'm going to make that shift right now. The performance benefits are there. The simplicity is there. I love it personally, and I've already started making the switch. So anyways, that's it for this update and for this video. If you could give it a thumbs up, I totally appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.